All right, so I'm going to open up Illustrator and open up, let's see here, uh, there we go, Sherry. What's the first line? I don't know, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, let me see, is that right? Yeah, that's fine, this will work. Okay, what, why, why do I get this? I don't want this, close this. All right, let's go in and zoom in on the TV because that's what we're talking about. All right, so let me get this situated where I want it and we'll look at it again. Okay, so here we go. Now, what you got is you've got these two letters. I'm going to go to the view menu. I'm going to hide the bounding box. I mean, I hide the, um, uh, what am I looking for here? Uh, bounding box. Yeah, I don't want the bounding box. And I still got it. You hide bounding box. Why am I getting them? I think it's because, okay, I think it's because it's a PDF. Let me do this. Let me quickly save this. Save as, we'll save it as a um, Illustrator file in there. And that might change things a little bit. Hit OK. And now let's click it. I still get it. All right. Well, the first thing that I want to do here is in order to, you have two letters. You have the B. Oh, you know what? It might be group. Object ungroup. There we go. So you have the B, and there's the B. See me moving the B? I do. Okay, and then you've got the T. Now, both of these are live text. You could tell that because you got the line underneath it. That's that's still live text, meaning essentially it hasn't been turned into graphic shapes, right? Right. Okay, so all that you know. All right, so what I'm going to do first to make this work is, and I might as well do it for both of them. I don't know what this thing is. Let's... Uh, Let's go object, hide, selection, get that out of here. All right, I select both of these guys. Oops. Select both of these guys. And let's go type, create outlines. So that's the first thing that you want to do. You want to turn them into outlines. Now, these are nothing but hinted shapes. These are basically graphic shapes that have been hinted and turned into text. They're very, very fancy uh, ovals and rectangles. That's essentially what these are. Okay? So... They've got a bunch of anchor points on here, and what I'm trying to do is, you'll notice that I created a space, a bigger space in here. I, I want to make it look a little bit more like the TIB, and I thought by finding a positioning, maybe something along the lines of that, maybe a little bit more, about like that, you get maybe a better sense of TIB. This, that was my thinking on this. So in order to do that, okay, are you with me so far in this? You, you, have you tried doing this? No. That's probably where your problem is. Did you change the text from live text to, to uh, outline text? No, because I didn't see that part in the video. Well, I just solved your problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's, no, that definitely. And I was like, I am not getting the outline. Why yeah. am I not getting that? Yeah, and you know what? Actually, dummy me, I, that should have been the first thing I asked you is, did you take this and turn it into text outline? You cannot modify uh, live text this way. The text has to be converted into outline shape in order to do this. I was it's, trying to do that outline shape. Yeah. I was trying to do that, but... You got to select the text, make yeah. sure it's selected as though you were going to just change the text with the type tool. And then you have to go up to the type menu and go create outlines. And then what you see, you can see, I mean, you could clearly see what's going on here, right? This has now got an outline around it and it's got little anchor points. So this is now really uh, graphic, hinted graphic shapes. That's what they are. And all we need to do to, to start modifying this is start tweaking the shapes uh, because they're now available to do that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bring the pen tool and its related tools out. Uh, what I want is the add anchor point tool. And let me just quickly show you a couple of things. This B is the one that we're going to work on. Notice that there are two anchor points right there at the end. You see them? Yes. Yeah. There's one right next to it right there. That's a really good anchor point because it happens to be there. That's one anchor point I don't have to place on this. And strangely enough, there's another one right there. And that's probably because there's this arcing curve that's going on in there. And that little point right there is necessary to get that curve the correct way. That's why it's there. Okay? okay. Now, I'm going to place an anchor point on the path right about there. Okay, so you see how I added a new anchor point? 
I did. Yeah. And actually, I don't need to do it there. It's going to be on this one. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to put an anchor point here. Okay, so now I have an, a new anchor point. Watch when I deselect this and reselect it. Okay, can you see how I've added that anchor point? Yes. All right. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get my direct selection tool because what you can do with the direct selection tool, which is that guy right there, you can click on the direct selection tool. You can come in and you can click on an anchor point and select one anchor point. That's why they call it the direct selection tool. So now I'm going to hold the shift key down. I got that anchor point selected. I'm going to click on the shift key. Okay. And I'm going to click on the second anchor point, which is the one right above it. And I'm going to just simply take the, um, the uh, left arrow key on your keyboard and just move it over until it overlaps the T, just like that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing to this guy right here. I'm going to select it. Notice that because of the curve, there's that little hinting anchor point right there. Okay. I'm going to get the add anchor point tool. And I'll place an anchor point right about there on that T, right? Uh, where are you at? Come on, right there. Good. And now get the direct selection tool. And when I s click on this, you see I got my new point. I'm going to come over. I'm going to click on the bottom anchor point here, shift, and click on that anchor point right there. And this time I'm using the arrow key that points right. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to walk it over until I get those two overlapping like that and that is exactly how I did it and you get somewhat of the illusion of TIB with this so I mean it isn't a true TIB but the illusion begins to take shape that this is TIB and that would be my ligature now if I wanted to make this a permanent ligature this is not what I did last night in the um, in the uh, critique but I'll show you how you could go ahead and make this a permanent assuming that you've got this exactly where you want it. Oh, and by the way, now that I think about it, there's something else. If you wanted to, you could, and this, although it is pushing the envelope a little bit, you could come in here and create an ellipse, come in here and create a, a circle like that mm -hmm. and place it in there to further the illusion that that's a TIB. That's just something. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, that's just something that occurred to me as I was sitting here looking at this. That I, I could really make this look like a TI. So you see how a graphic designer's mind works. That's really how a graphic designer's mind works. You start looking at the shapes that are created with, from these letters, and you start thinking, what can I do to make the letters look more readable as what they aren't? Which I is like that better. huh? I like that one better. So yeah, so now what you can do is, and let's let's zoom this out a little bit. Let's go view, zoom out a little bit, and a little bit more. Zoom out. There we go. And now you've got TIB, and I'd say that's pretty convincingly TIB. I mean, that's something that that I that area there, although it's connected to the B, does begin to look like I. And the T obviously reads as T, and it still reads as B. So now you've got something that I think people could look at and say that's a T an I and a B. So pretty good, huh? Yes, I love it. So what I was getting at before when I had this little brainstorm with the I um, was that this is a B and it's not connected to the T. And that T is a T and it's not connected to the B. So if I wanted to make this a perm, and this of course is not connected to anything either. And this does violate the conditions of our logo, but if you were to go and get yourself a Baskerville italic t uh, I, lowercase, you would get that. So it, it is not, and, and that's, of course, not that's Baskerville. Not but you, right, but you get my point is that there would be an I available, that dot would be part of an I. So it could literally be utilized this way, and you'd, I would allow that. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So so now what I would do if I wanted to make this, if, if let's say, for instance, this was the way this logo was going to end up looking and we really wanted it to be this way and you wanted to make it permanent. What I would do is I'd select all three of these guys and you could, you could use the, um, where is the tool? The uh, shape builder tool. Okay. And you could literally 
drag to create a shape. I don't think I'm going to do it this way. You could click and drag through the shapes to create a, a single tool using the Shape Builder tool. Or the way I'm going to do it is the old school way, is go to the Window menu. I'm going to open up Pathfinder. And the very first one in the Pathfinder is what's called Unite. And I don't know whether you know what that means or not, but essentially what Unite means is that any objects that you have selected at this point, when you click Unite, it will join them together and create one single unit out of them. And That's kind of like group, but... It's, it's beyond group. It actually converts them into... You'll see in a second. Here's what I want you to look at. I want you to look at the two points of overlap right there. Because when I click on this, are you ready? Uh -huh. One, two, three, and watch those areas of overlap. You see how they go away? Yeah, they went away. All right, because it is not grouped. Now let me go edit undo, and I'll show you the difference. Let's go edit undo add. And if I go object group, okay, now this object is grouped. Yeah. They are still independent yeah. objects that you could click on and go into isolation mode, and now you've got that B selected. You see what I can do with it? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm going to edit undo that because it's not what I wanted. I just wanted to show you, and I now I've made a mess for myself here. Let me get it back. And unfortunately, Illustrator does not have what Photoshop has, which is a, uh, a history panel. Uh, and undo undo group. That's another thing too for you to understand. You you cannot modify. Uh, you can't modify uh, with Pathfinder shapes that are grouped. They have to be ungrouped. So that object is alone. That object is alone. That object is alone. I select all three of them, and I hit unite. And now instead of having three separate objects, this is one object permanently made into one piece. Gotcha. And that's what you would do if you were going to end up um, modifying this logo this way. And actually, I think that's a pretty slick presentation. I think that works pretty good. Yeah, I really um, Are you good with that? Mm-hmm.